Hi, I'm Robert Height, driver of the Automobile Club of Southern California Chevrolet Camaro Funny Car for John Force Racing. Well, when I first saw funny cars back in the 80s, I was going to college and I saw two Nitro Funny Cars run and it was, it was John Force and Jim Dunn and I thought, these guys are superheroes, okay? That's what it takes to drive one of these things. But, you know, working on them, because I was a mechanic, I loved learning about cars and, and just working on them, so that was the next best thing, and I, when I finally got the opportunity to do it, you know, I thought I'd made the big time. I drive a Chevrolet Camaro funny car. It's 10,000 plus horsepower, 125 inch wheelbase, so it's pretty short, and the engine's in front of you, and basically this car will go from zero to a hundred in less than a second. Um, I actually have the national record in ET and speed. The elapsed time is ET. The ET is 3.793 seconds and speed is 339.87 miles an hour. All race weekends are pretty much the same. You make two runs on, on Friday qualifying, two runs on Saturday are also qualifying, and then eliminations on Sunday and it's the top 16 drivers in each class race for a win. So, you know, I, I try to get a, get a flight into a race early, you know, spend some time with my team on, on Thursday, just get into race mode and pay attention to what's going on on the racetrack. Just get your head into the game. And then Friday, you're out there qualifying. And once we go to the staging lanes, I really want to focus on what's going on up there. You know, we have radios, I can hear my crew chiefs talking to the track guy, and you listen to what other cars are doing, and that all that just gets you mentally prepared for what you're about to face. But the 339 mile an hour run is what all the fans relate to. Every race we go to, the fans want to know if I'm going to break 340 miles an hour. They really could care less about the ET, but that is what wins races, you know? You can, you can have a great ET and a slow speed and still win a race. His success behind the wheel has led him to become president of John Force Racing, and Robert doesn't let himself forget just how lucky he truly is. I'm very fortunate that John's given me the opportunity to drive. I've also watched and seen how he's built this empire and won all these championships, and it's just from hard work. What you see with John on TV and what the fans love about John is what you get 24-7. Every day is something new. It uh, never gets boring or dull. And he's a loose cannon all the time. But he also was really good at surrounding himself with great people. And that's what we try to do today. We have a lot of good people that can work good together. It's tough when you have to race your teammates. Sometimes I feel that I don't get up for racing John like I do other people because, uh, I mean, you just want to rip their hearts out. I don't care who it is you're racing. That's the attitude you have to have. You know, you're going to get to the finish line first no matter what. And it's harder to do that with John because he gave me this opportunity of, you know, if he wouldn't have stepped up and, and allowed me to do this. So it's hard to have the same will to win against John. Any kind of race car you jump in, there's an element of danger. So you know what you're getting yourself into. You have to respect the automobile, but you also have to respect your team and trust them. These, these cars are t torn apart every single run, okay? The engines, the clutches, and a mistake can be costly, okay? It can hurt somebody. You have to believe in your team and, uh, you know, you have to, I'm not afraid of getting hurt in a race car, but I do respect the machine. I mean, anytime you're dealing with that much horsepower and mechanical parts, things can go wrong. So you've got to be ready for it, but you can't let it overcome you. Last year was a, a, an unbelievable year for my team. You know, we set both ends of the national record. We won the championship, which is our second championship. And one of the coolest things was after we won both championships is to come back through this shop and just see the, the morale after two huge victories. I mean, it's just, you win the championship, that's what you work all year for. 
these guys back here at the shop work just as hard as the guys on the road. So it was pretty cool just to come through here and see the, the look on everybody's faces and the smiles and just an accomplishment. After winning the championship, Robert stayed hungry for more, always looking for any edge possible, including staying relentless off the track. Actually, I learned a lot last year. Going in for the last day of the season, fighting it out with another driver to win a championship, the race just couldn't get here quick enough. I wanted to get it over with, but got it done. And after that, I'm still in the race, but I'd already won the championship, and there was no pressure. It was just, it was gone. So I told myself over the winter, that's the way I need to be all the time. I figure out how to not think about it, and go out there and have some fun, be relaxed, and you're gonna do a better job. I think the biggest misconception about our sport is how hard is it to drive a car in a straight line. When you're dealing with, you know, 10, 11,000 horsepower and a 125 inch wheelbase car, it does not want to go straight, okay? So anybody that thinks it's easy, come on in.